Hey everyone, I'm Varun Gandhi. I work as a software engineer at Sourcegraph. I've only been writing Go for about six weeks now, after working in C++ for about two and a half years. Given that, the compiler complains about my code quite a bit. So today, I want to share my favorite tip for better understanding compiler error messages, which is by reading the Go spec. So what is the Go spec? It is a document describing the syntax and semantics of Go code. Syntax covers things like keywords, punctuation, and so on. Semantics covers type checking and the runtime behavior of code. Unlike some other language specs, such as that for C++, the Go spec is quite accessible. If you're not sure why some code does or does not lead to a compiler error, then consulting the spec is a good way to understand the details. Let me illustrate with a couple of simplified examples based on actual errors I was having trouble understanding. Consider the following example code. I've declared a struct x with a single string field s, and I'm trying to get a pointer to the field in various ways in the function f. Which of these lines do you think will result in a compiler error? I will wait for 10 seconds in case you want to think about it before I reveal the answer. Turns out the fourth line in the function will give an error but the other lines are okay. For the fourth line, the compiler complains that you can't take the address of i.x.s, but it doesn't say why you can't do that. Clearly, there's some reason why taking the address is allowed on the second and third lines, but not on the fourth line. Let's take a look at the spec to understand this better. In the Go spec, there's a section called address operators, which covers this. I've slightly tweaked the wording in that section and shown it here. According to the spec, the address of x is only well-defined if x falls into one of the five cases described here. It's a variable, a pointer, a field access, or a slice or array indexing operation. Let me remove those last two, since those won't be relevant for us. Now let's see how this definition applies to the code example from before. The relevant case is the field selector one, since in all three cases, we're trying to take the address of a field. So what exactly is the addressable struct operand part. We can answer that recursively by examining the definition of addressable again. Temp is addressable because it is a variable. Hence, temp.s is the field selector of an addressable struct operand, and it too is addressable. i.starx is a pointer in direction. Hence, it is addressable. Hence, i.starx.s is also addressable because it is the field selector of an addressable struct operand. However, in the last case, i.x is neither a variable nor a pointer nor a field selector. Since it doesn't match any of the cases, we're forced to conclude that i.x is not addressable. Hence, i.x.s is also not addressable. That's why the compiler gave us an error for the last case, stating that we couldn't take the address of i.x.s. Okay, that's a lot, but now let's move on to a different example. Here's a trick question. Does Go have implicit conversions where it would convert a value of one type to a value of a different type without an explicit cast operation? If you ask the circuit engine, it might give you a confident result saying that Go doesn't really have implicit conversions. Again, this is an example where consulting the specification is valuable. Let's consider some code as shown here. I have two custom types, A and B, which are wrappers over a struct and string, respectively. I take a value of the custom type and try to return it as a different type, first for A and then for B. Take 10 seconds. Which of these do you think will work? Turns out the first function works and the second function doesn't. The compiler tells us that you can't use b as type string, but it's not clear why the example with a works, but the example with b doesn't. They seem pretty similar, right? Again, let's look at the spec to see if it can help us better understand what's going on here. In this case, since the error is in type checking a return statement, let's look at that section. According to the section on return statements, the condition that applies here is that the return value must be assignable to the function's result type. Assignable here is a key term that is defined in the spec. Let's look at its definition. 
There are many different cases for when some variable is assignable to a type T, but the case that is relevant here is the one that talks about identical underlying types. Here, underlying type and defined types are also terms which are defined in the spec. I'm not going to show you their definitions because there's only so much space on the slide, but I will explain them in context as we go along. Let's look at how this applies to the first code example from before. For the example of the single element struct, the underlying type of A is the single element struct type, and the struct's underlying type is itself. You can think of the underlying type as what's on the right-hand side of a definition for types which are defined with type declarations. So V and T will have identical underlying types, and the first condition is satisfied. If you look at the second condition, A is a defined type, but according to the spec, an anonymous struct type is not a defined type because there's no type declaration for it. Hence, the second condition. Let's look at the second example. The underlying type of B is string, and string's underlying type is itself. So again, the first condition is satisfied. However, according to the spec, both B and string are defined types. So the second condition is not satisfied. And that's why we got that compiler error. I just want to leave you with a couple of closing thoughts. If a compiler, first, if a compiler error doesn't make sense, your first instinct may be to use Google or Stack Overflow. To that list, consider adding the spec as well. Because if you put in a little bit of extra work, you'll get a much more authoritative answer. Second, sometimes reading the spec can help you understand the different cases in the language, which you hadn't considered before. Thanks for your time. If you want to learn about how source graph can help you understand your code faster, check out this QR code. And if you're passionate about spreading code literacy, join our community space. I look forward to speaking with all of you in Discord or on Twitter. Thanks.